Hello humans, I'm Batsy, and today I'm going to talk a bit about my SMP. I recently made a trailer announcing the date for the new season, which might have piqued your interest, but that's just a trailer that doesn't show all the details and features the server has. So today we are going to take a look at that. It's not going to be a complete guide on every little thing in mod, but it should paint a better picture of what experience you can expect to have in this community server. I have divided this video into more comprehensible segments, so if you are re-watching it to refresh your mind about something specific that was in the server, you can navigate with the timestamps below. The first one, and what I'm most excited about, which is the hardcore mod. Sadly, by the time of this recording, the mod isn't done yet. But hopefully, everything will be ready soon enough, so instead, let me explain to you how the mod is going to work, and maybe by the time you join the server, the mod is already fully implemented. The idea of the mod is to fill two gaps that in my opinion the softcore experience is missing. First is that either the world is set to hardcore, or it's not. Something that to me doesn't make sense for a server, I don't expect everyone to be willing to play hardcore, so the first mechanic is that the mod it's optional. You can craft an altar, and place it down in your base. The moment you do that, you are immediately set in hardcore. That way everyone else who doesn't want to, doesn't have to do it. Once you play hardcore, there is the other issue of dying, which makes the gameplay a little bit too punishing in my opinion. Instead, if you die, you will get stuck in spectator, until someone goes to your altar, and pays the price to revive you. Once you get revived, all the items you had will be waiting for you at the altar, but you will have to pay to retrieve them, if you don't pay, then the next time you die, the new inventory will be there, and the old items will get lost. In short, dying it's not the end of the world, but you better be able to afford it or you gonna get on a very big debt in no time. And before anyone mentions, but Batsy, that's not real hardcore. Well yes, it's not, it's just meant to spice things up a little bit and have some fun. Better Archaeology is a mod that expands on the archaeology mechanics added in 1.20. It adds several new ruins and structures to explore, which contains new fossils and more artifacts to collect. Some of those new items have powerful enchantments or new properties. I don't want to spoil what they do. I encourage everyone to go explore and find out by yourselves, but some of them are pretty wild. Aquaculture is a mod that expands on a few things relating to underwater life. It adds many new fishes that you can either catch with a fishing rod or sometimes you can see them swimming around. Some of them are biome dependent so you will have to explore a bit if you plan on catching them all. The mod also gives a chance of finding new gear from the fishing drops, with a very low chance of happening. I particularly love these new items because they also have some interesting properties. Like the Neptunium hoe, which adds the Neptune's gift property. That allows for tilled farmland to stay moist. Basically, if you tile the land, it will already become moist, and it will remain that way forever, so you can essentially make farms without water. Aquaculture also adds the fish fillets. You can get those by slicing the fish you catch, the bigger the fish, the more fillets it's gonna give you. And staying in the theme of food, we also have Farmer's Delight, and several of its add-ons. The idea is to expand on the food that the game already has, but also stay in theme with all the different parts of the game. Like all of those recipes with ingredients that you can farm in the nether. Create Central Kitchen will help integrate all of those new recipes into the Create mod. All we need to do is get ourselves a blaze burner, give it the recipe we want to use, and it will become a blaze stove. Then we place the cooking pot on top, and we are ready to automate some stuff. Of course, it will require more than this to automate it, but that will be a video for another day. It's quite well explained in the pondering system that Create already uses. Central Kitchen also helps integrate other crafting recipes that have to do with the cutting board, so we can automate those too with the help of a deployer. To expand the cooking further we also have Create Confectionery, which mainly adds candy, 
especially chocolate items. I also added a ton of new recipes that make the stone cutter and the mechanical saw become more relevant. Now wood can also be used in the stone cutter by either adding logs to convert between the various types of them or using straight planks to craft any of the variants of each type of wood. Those recipes also have more sensible outcomes, so you won't be wasting planks to craft a couple of trapdoors. The mechanical saw now has literally thousands of recipes that integrates the chipped block variants into Create. If you remember the video I made about recycling everything, that allowed me to convert all of the blocks from the chipped mod into its vanilla variants so it can be stored properly. On the same theme, there are many new recipes that helps recycle many things into their core components, and even more recipes for the crushing wheels to recycle things like leather boots into leather, or even diamond gear into nuggets. To finish this section, there are also new recipes that aren't in vanilla, but they really should be there. And this leads us to the building blocks. We already talked about chipped, which is a must-have in any mod pack in my opinion. I also added Mr. Crayfish Furniture Mod, another furniture mod, and creates Deco. Which, in my opinion, it's already more than enough to cover the building needs. There are also a few new lights added by Nightlight, and many mods like Farmer's Delight also have their own custom blocks. Instead of adding yet more variants of blocks, I went for the framed blocks route, which is also another must-have, especially when paired with chipped. It allows the use of any full block to be used in many new shapes, and I really mean many. The last part regarding decorations is immersive paintings. Not only adds new and amazing paintings to use, but it also allows importing images from our computer, so we can frame screenshots or make our own paintings. One of the most important things for me was to make a world that feels amazing to explore. Sadly though, I don't think that the vanilla world generation is enough, but I think that data packs like Terralith overdo it a little bit. That's where Wither's world generation comes into play. To me, it's an amazing world generation, but it stays quite true to vanilla, and most of the new biomes are decently realistic. To pair it with the world generation we also have naturalist and more mob variants. That way the world feels more alive, without adding hundreds of new animals and items that are essentially broken. I also included both creeper and enderman overhauls to spice things up a little bit, and make the nights become more interesting. I also ended up adding sophisticated storage and backpacks. Something that has been requested by my supporters endlessly and that I always said no to. I didn't nerf the mod too much, other than having to remove the shulkers because of incompatibilities, and because they made no sense to me. And a couple of other details from the mod. The core of it should work the same way. To pair it with that, we also have Tom's simple storage. I decided on this one because as the name suggests, it's pretty simple to use. The only nerf thing from this one is the interdimensional mechanics and whatnot. I have no idea who thought that was balanced, but it's clearly gone. The rest of the mod should be working the same way as it should. Of course, we also have Create and several of its add-ons. We already mentioned a few of them, but we also count with Steam and Rails, which adds more tracks and things to do with trains. Enchanted Industry, which adds a way to automate enchanting, as well as more powerful tiers of the base enchantments. The last add-in is Balanced Flight, though I should point out before anything, this is a version of the mod that Etop modified for the server. He also fixed several incompatibilities and bugs that the mod had. What remains from the original mod are the flight anchors. Those allow the use of creative flight for a certain radius around the anchor, based on the speed that you feed into it. Something that consumes stress units, and in this version of the mod we made sure that it does consume a whole lot at max speed. I also managed to get a version of the Elytra that makes more sense with the Create theme, and it comes with its own recipe so you don't have to go to the end to farm for them. Though I should say, the recipe might not be easy to automate. One thing I always disliked, it's the fact that there is no good way to have a proper economy on the server. 
The only reasonable way to do it is with items that aren't renewable, but Create makes farming things like diamonds become too trivial. To try and fix that, I introduced weekly quests to the server. Those quests will grant you a varied amount of coins that you can later use in the shopping district to buy stuff. Once you have completed all of the quests from the list, then you will have to wait for next week to continue farming. Obviously, those coins cannot be crafted or farmed in any other way. We can also reroll the missions with iron, gold, and diamonds, in case the mission is too hard to do. But, the more you roll them, the more pricey it is to do so. This is something that might get balanced as we move along, and it might change in the future, but, my hope is that it introduces a coin that actually has a little bit of value, and it requires some effort to farm. Lastly, there are tons of small mods that add very niche details to the server. From being able to place diagonal fences, rework for anvils and their repair cost, cosmetic armor so you can change what other people see, or hide the armor altogether. There are many small mods like those. What was more important to me, was to make them all feel that they are part of the same experience. That's why I put an incredible amount of effort into making a unified resource pack for the server. I have combined countless resource packs, and I have handmade many of the UI elements and so on. To ensure the best compatibility, and so it's easier to set up, I have also combined them all into five different resource packs that are made in order. I will leave on Discord a list of all the resource packs used in the process, but this was the best way to go about it. I was able to delete countless of redundant parts of the resource packs, and many components that aren't even used on the server. I also had to extend many of them to make them look the same through all of the various mods we are using. In short, it took forever to make this repack and not everything will be perfect, because the game still has its limitations, but I'm incredibly happy with the end results. That's all you should know about the server. If you like how the experience sounds, you can join the server by becoming a tier 2 Fong in coffee, the link will be in the description below. Thank you so much for watching this showcase, and I hope to see you in game.